Are you crazy? Maybe a little. It's a slight addiction. If somebody will give me the money, I'll buy a property. <laughs> Our tenants in the back right now are moving out, eh? There are times I think to myself, man, what the heck am I doing? It's very stressful. One of your decisions was crap. Things could get out of hand and we could lose it all. I'm 28 years old. I work in a high-end retail furniture store, and we have a daughter, McKenna. My name is Luke. I'm 29, and I work in security. We make around 110 to 120,000 a year. We decided to purchase rental property for the money. We have three properties in total. In two years' time, I'd like to have a million dollars worth of mortgages. We figured that. This was a pretty sound investment, and we thought we could retire young. At times, uh, things can be overwhelming. It's always hard to juggle things when you have a full-time job, your wife has a full-time job, you have a newborn at home. You don't know when something's going to pop up. <laughs> What's that? You guys got a leak right now? We have massive travel. It takes me an hour and 15 minutes to get up here. There are times that, no, I think to myself, man, what the heck am I doing? I think that the rental properties are a good investment, but when the bills go out, it makes the dream seem a little bit further away. Our paychecks and our rental income goes into the line of credit, and then we'll move money up from the line of credit into the rental expense account to then pay the bills. There should be surplus every month, and that the line of credit should go down. It's not. <laughs> We've been kind of fighting with the line of credit for the last two years. If too many things come in at the same time, then you're using that money to float you know, for that time period. We don't have much money to back up an emergency, and that's terrifying. I just don't want things to spin out of control where you're missing uh, mortgage payments. you got to pay $10,000 a year just in property tax. That's a heavy burden. My biggest fear is something major that's going to cost thousands to fix and we won't have the money. And then what do you do? It may break us. This month, I'll help this couple protect their number one asset, their home. I've been solving money problems for over 20 years, tackling everything from high finance to low income. I help people understand money and debt and how to balance it all while keeping a roof over their heads. Shelly and Luke have been buying property like it's a board game. But the money is real, and so are the risks. One bad move could bankrupt their young family. I'm here to make sure they don't leave it all to chance. Gail Voss Oxley. Hi, Gail. Shelly. Nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Hi, Gail. Luke. Nice to meet you, Luke. If you don't mind, the first thing I'd like to do is drop my bag and have a quick look around. So this is a pretty little house. How much did you have set aside for the upgrades that you wanted to make? Nothing. What did you spend on this bathroom? I spent about 3500 There's a whole bunch of stuff jammed everywhere and paint jobs that aren't finished. This is kind of way they run their rental properties, too. Right. <laughs> what a mess. I don't know where you got this money management system, but it sucks. <laughs> what you do is you take all your income and you throw it on your line and then you pay all your expenses off your line. So you have no distinctions between what's personal versus what's business income. It's just well, sort of like soup. And one of the things that I noticed was you didn't include any income from your rental properties as your income. No. Well, I'm sure there is some. I just don't know what it is. You're running a business and you don't know if you're making a profit? If you really worked it out, it probably wouldn't. Hello. Note to Gail, really work it out. It has to be wearing to work a full-time job and then be terrified that it's all going to fall down around your ears every time you get faced with some future expenses that will virtually wipe you out. If either one of you lost your job or got sick, this whole house of cards would come tumbling down because you are so dependent on your incomes to keep this sucker floating. You're a hair's breadth away from bankruptcy. 
your home and your family are a huge risk. So the next thing I want to do is I want to show you where your money has been going and hey, we're going to fix it. I think in a sense it's a bit of tough love to get you to look back and say, okay, maybe there really is a bigger problem than I thought here. This is your personal spending. When we add up your grocery, for restaurant and booze, it's over $1,000 a month for two people and a baby. Home decor, building supplies, $1,059 a month. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of money. Shelly and Luke aren't just overspending on their personal expenses. Thanks to their hodgepodge money management system, they have no idea how much or how little they're making from those rental properties. I broke out each account separately so that it would be understandable. You have your credit card one, mm -hmm. negative $400. So you were carrying that balance on average over a six month period, okay? On your credit card two, you're up $4. On your credit card three, you were down almost nine. When it came to your line of credit, you put $11,000 into the line, but you spent 10,007, so you were up about $675. Into your rental account, we have $7,200 going in, almost $10,000 coming out, so you're negative $2,657. Because they haven't been tracking their costs, while Shelly and Luke think they're reimbursing their business expenses, in reality, their paychecks are making up the difference. And that means every month, they're in the hole. The net result is that your properties are behind $1,900 every month. You're forgetting the fact that you keep generating income from your day jobs. If that income is constantly being used to keep everything else at even, then you're actually losing money every single month. Make sense? That does make sense, yes. Okay. Yeah. So the long and the short of it is, guess how much you're overspending by every single month? $2,000. $3,200 a month. Ooh. Five years, $1.2 million worth of debt. Wow. So you will have achieved your dream. Yeah. <laughs> Not the right way. <laughs> no. Yeah, I didn't like that part. No, that, that didn't sit well. <laughs> I'm more, more screwed than I thought. <laughs> Is that where you want to go? Absolutely. No, I don't not. want to go. Do you promise me that you will do anything I ask? Yep. We can fix this problem, and better yet, you can earn up to $5,000. <laughs> Great. <laughs> we are going to clean up the mess that you've made. Mm -hmm. We are going to create a safety net for you. And we're going to make you start planning so that you're not flying by the seat of your pants, OK? I guess the next thing we should do is figure out what you're going to live on. <laughs> Coming up, time to face facts. The numbers are adding up a lot higher than I thought. Well, that sucks. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Shelly and Luke think owning income properties is the key to their financial future. We want to retire young. But these aspiring property moguls are finding there's a little more to it than collecting rent checks. You're thinking to yourself, look at all the money that's rolling in, man. I see a lot of money rolling out, ah, too. That's <laughs> it! <laughs> I've shown them their full-time jobs are supporting the income properties, not the other way around. Your home and your family are a huge risk. And making the three-hour round trip to check on tenants is taking a toll on their family life. The phone rings off the hook. There's bills that come in every day. It can be very tiring. To get a handle on things, they're going to have to play by my rules. For the next month, these homeowners will learn to live on a strict cash budget. No more credit cards. They'll complete weekly challenges to tackle their money and relationship issues. And if they're willing to change, I'll reward them with thousands of dollars to pay down their debt. No changes, no money. Pony up with the credit cards and the debit cards. Come on, give them over. You knew this was coming. I knew it was coming. Yeah. I am cutting your variable spending by 83%. Wow. Instead of the $5,900 you were spending, you will have $1,000 a month. Wow. You will have $125 a week for food. $50 a week for transportation. That's not even going to put gas in both vehicles. This is personal transportation, not business transportation. You'll have $31.25 for clothing and gifts. 
$25 for entertainment and $22.50 for other. You keep the receipts in the jar. You keep a running total. That means everybody knows exactly what's going on. Nobody can fudge it. There are two cards in here that you use strictly for business. So I'm going to give those back to you. But you can't do any personal stuff. I will check your bank statements. Because if you cheat, you don't get the money. Okay. <laughs> now, you, Miss Smarty Pants, you think you know what the challenge is. I think that you're going to make me realize that my rental properties maybe don't make money. <laughs> you have to make a budget for each property. And by divvying it up like this, you will have a very clear sense of not only what you're making and what you're spending, but also what each property is costing you. Each okay. property has costs beyond the mortgage, like maintenance and taxes and utilities. There is also the time and cost involved with traveling back and forth to those properties, an hour and a half each way. Shelly and Luke need to include all these variables when considering their net profit. We're gonna take the money that we have sitting here that is equal to the income for each property and move it over into the expense pile. Let's start with the Allura property. We bought this property because it's got a rental unit upstairs and a rental unit downstairs. Now, water tank rental. This is a fundamental exercise which should have been done before they purchased each property. We're actually making $130 a month. That's a lot lower than I thought. I am a little bit disappointed to be away from my family and stuff for like 130 some bucks. The numbers are adding up a lot higher than I thought. We're gonna do Arthur next. The white building there, bought it from my father-in-law. A solid commercial unit and three solid tenants right now. Brings in a pretty good revenue. So the annual maintenance I think is gonna have to be a lot higher. Accounting and legal costs, 60, 70, 80, 90. So we make 110 on Arthur. That's even worse than Alora. <laughs> For this property, we are running a negative amount if we don't have a renter here. The house where Shelley and Luke live with their daughter has a rental unit, which is currently empty, but they haven't been in a rush to find a new tenant. Now they're realizing how much they need that extra income. Between all of the properties, we're running short $167.50 a month. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I was really under the impression, though, that we were spending money from the properties. If we didn't have sort of good jobs, or if one of us did lose a job, it would be bad. Funny how when you just break it down to its simplest form, making a budget for each property, it becomes really clear. You are aware of the effort you are putting in and the reward you are getting or not getting, yeah. okay? Because you are trading off a lot. You're trading off time with your family. Breaking it down like that yeah. kind of does simplify it a little bit more. How do you feel about how the whole week went? We don't have enough money for gas. I can, it's, we can get to work and back, and it's pretty tight. OK, so you have to decide what else you're not going to spend money on yeah. in order to have enough money. And you're going to have that opportunity this week, okay. because that's this week's challenge. This week's challenge is to make a budget that balances. Now you've done the business side of it, mm -hmm. you have to do the personal side of it. Of course. Okay. All of these plans assume that your rental unit is actually rented, so rent it. <laughs> I would love to. Coming up, Shelly and Luke's cash flow dries up. I've given a notice for non-payment. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. We decided to purchase rental property for the money. But for rookie real estate investors Shelly and Luke, more money is going out than is coming in. Five years? $1.2 million worth of debt. To be a million dollars in debt before 30, well, I think it would scare a lot of people. I challenged them to stop flying by the seat of their pants and actually do the math. So we're not making money. Well, that sucks. When the bills go out, it makes the dream seem a little bit further away. The empty basement apartment in their home is keeping them in the red. All of these plans assume that your rental unit is actually rented, so get that sucker rented. <laughs> To get a sense of the rental market in their area, Shelly and Luke looked at comparable units. Oh, nice kitchen. Big bathroom. Looks all fairly new. I like it. I think they could get more than $8.50. What do you think, McKenna? Um. How do you like the wood theme, dear? It's pretty ugly. <laughs> oh, it's a kitchen. This is $800 a month. Wow. 
don't have a separate bedroom in ours either. But I could build um, a bedroom. But we could size. easily put a wall up. Maybe we should. Yeah. And then we could get more money for it. We rented our basement apartment for $5.95, which is on the low side. Their unit needs sprucing up if they want to get top dollar. With a price point and a plan for renting the apartment, Shelly and Luke sat down to get their personal budget in order. I told them to include a modest emergency fund so they'd be in better shape for the unexpected. Because when you own properties, you have to be ready for anything. Hey, babe. Our tenants in the back right now are moving out, eh? I've given a notice for non-payment. I would be filing an eviction notice. They're moving out before I have to go through that process. The process itself is upwards of $500. I mean, he said he'd, he'd pay, but I'll believe that one when it comes. I'd rather they move out than I can get it rented out quicker. I mean, that's kind of the ugly side of, of what can happen. Usually when we have a vacancy, uh, generally the line of credit would take the brunt of the hit. You did a great job on the budget. Thank you. Yeah, as long as the properties are rented. If this becomes a negative, yes. what do you do? What do you do? Where does the money come from? Where does the money come from? <laughs> well, I can't raise rents. That's one answer then. What else can you do? Um, you have some money left in your personal budget. Can I allot some of that? It's your money. You can do whatever you want, but then it has to be a line on your budget. Okay? Okay. During this process, it's made us sort of step back and look at really how we're doing things and really how much money we were throwing away. So there is a significant amount of personal time going into this Definitely. for which there is no compensation in terms of managing work, investment property, and family. And that's what we're going to deal with in the next challenge. It's a ton of time. It's, I mean, I'm sure that some of our friends look at it and go, you guys are insane, you know? How would you like to be the rental owner of this building? As long as it makes money. Well, yeah. you know what? <laughs> You're going to have an opportunity to find out. I'm sending you a father-son property owner management team to help you determine how you are doing. Okay. Oh, I'm kind of excited. Yeah, me too. <laughs> that is why we're in this beautiful building that we're in, because this is one of the properties that they own. I am hoping you will take good advice. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Shelly and Luke's profitable real estate empire was an illusion. Your properties are behind $1,900 every month. I was under the impression we were spending money from the properties. Now they've cut back their spending and straightened out their bookkeeping. And they've realized they can't afford to have a single unit empty. None of this works without that rental money, so get that sucker rented. Even when all units are at full capacity, the costs of managing their out-of-town properties are high. And they spend gobs of unpaid time traveling to deal with their tenants. For this challenge, I want them to look at another approach to becoming successful real estate investors. Shelly and Luke are going to consider the advantages of a downtown property that's only 20 minutes away from their home. Brian and John are property management experts focused on the downtown core. This is very simple. The building takes care of most of the issues. So the only thing you have to worry about is your appliances. Supply and demand is the key to it all. Demand for this real estate is high. So does this property actually then cost the owner of it money on a monthly basis? Well, it depends on what you put down. Like with right. the new rules anyway, investors had to put down 25%. Right. So generally, any property downtown Toronto that you can purchase with that yep. will carry itself. Yeah. Also, you got to look at the type of tenant that this property is going to attract. Yes, yeah, definitely. The young professional, young yep. couple, someone that you know is going to take care of the property and pay the rent. The property is still going up in value, easy to maintain, easy to control, easy to rent and that's where your life becomes easy. So if we were your clients, what kind of property would you try and put us into? I would probably put you into a small bachelor unit downtown. There are some other options out there that we should consider. If there's an easier way to do it, I'll take the easier road for sure. While considering new options for the future, Shelly and Luke turn their energy to their immediate issue finding tenants for their empty units. All right, so see you around seven. So what did you learn when you went out with the barons of property? I think I took away from it that there is another way. I think at this point, we'll take well, I, a step back and- I think collectively too, like, you know, 
we want to put the money aside to balance things, kind of straighten things out again. Yeah. And if she wants to like acquire something else, things will be in balance then because the cash will be behind it to do right. it. Okay, so how long until you have positive cash flow on the two properties that have empty units right now? September 1st. Okay, excellent. I think that every challenge and everything that we did on the show made us step back and reevaluate. And I think that it is important to reevaluate things and know exactly where you stand. So when we started all this, you were overspending about $3,200 a month, and you were headed to about $1.2 million worth of debt. You made a personal budget. You're gonna stick to your budget? Yes, like our personal bank account right now. Like I don't even know what to do with all the money. <laughs> nice feeling? It's a great feeling. Yep. It's a great feeling. You made budgets for each of your properties? Yep. So what I want you to do though is I want you to firm up those emergency funds for the properties. As long as you have all those potential stresses on your cash flow, as a family, you're not safe. So you're gonna do that. Definitely. I feel like we're in better shape. We always wanna make things improve and I don't want to take a step back, I want to move forward. And, and that's what Gail gave us. Now you have the means to create processes that will actually work for you. I'm hoping you will stick to them. Okay, so you did the right thing because you get $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> and I also have for you a membership in the Landlords Association. They have great resources. Use them wisely, okay? Come on. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. That's cool. Thank you, Gail. Shelly and Luke increased the rent on the basement apartment to $650 a month, lowering their personal housing costs. With a firm handle on the money, they're feeling less stressed and enjoying their family time even more.